in a similar forum, I was not very clear to the physicist. So today I will start, I will try to speak slower and clearer. Uh, the, uh, the downside of this may be that those of you who did understand my previous talk will not gather much more information from this one. <laughs> So uh, on the other side, if you have any questions, please interrupt in the middle. I'm trying to be clear. So I'll try to do my best. Um, so uh, first, uh, some, uh, so I'll give some motivation for Fourier coefficients and uh, then uh, define them uh, uh, in the most uh, general uh, setting I know. So, uh, well, uh, it of course starts from Fourier coefficients for modular forms, as this have been, uh, defined many times and used a lot during this uh, conference. So just to remind, uh, well, modular form is a, a certain periodic function on the upper half planes. It's, it particular, it's periodic to shift by one, to uh, z goes to z plus one, which is uh, this corresponds to this matrix in uh, SL2z. So be, being uh, periodic to such shifts, uh, it, we can decompose it to Fourier series. So eta is some Cn of y uh, phi to the n, where phi is e to the two pi i x. So uh, since it's periodic to shifts by one in the x coordinates, it's decomposed to Fourier series. And the coefficients are called uh, Fourier coefficients. One of them is very special. Sometimes it's even excluded. It is a C0. It is called the constant term. Uh, it uh, ha has separate importance. For example, it vanishes for cuspidal forms. Uh, uh, all others uh, uh, are Eulerian. They decompose to product by primes. Uh, which is a sign uh, that they are very good for number theory. This is very useful property. And uh, we don't need signs. We know that these are very good for number theories, theory. They, uh, it has come up with uh, also in some talks uh, this week that these coefficients carry number theoretic information. And in fact, uh, uh, they are part of the reasons we like modular forms. Sometimes we just compose a modular form as a generating function for these Fourier coefficients. Uh, yes, please. Ah, you say it should be Z? No, I don't remember. <laughs> no, Z, Z is X plus I So should this be Z or X? It's, it's X. No, it's fine. No, it's, it's, it's not a holo word. It's fine. It could be either. Ah, uh, it's not a holo word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's funny notation. Uh, Q is funny notation. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. Fine. <laughs> yeah. Indeed. 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 So, uh, so they uh, carry number theoretic information, and uh, as I learned in this uh, conference, also useful for string theory. Okay, so we would like to, uh, and also they're just very good tool to study modular forms. Um, so uh, people would like to generalize this to automorphic forms, and this has been done. So how has this been done? Uh, uh, the uh, first, uh, uh, most naive but still useful way uh, is uh, uh, look what is this group. So uh, more precisely, this uh, transformation generates a subgroup of SL2Z given uh, like this. This is a unipotent radical of the Borel subgroup. So you can call this M. It's unipotent radical of Borel, which is uh, this subgroup. So. Uh, this is for, for SL2, for GLN, uh, Borel is just upper triangular matrices. Should say it's one of them, there are infinitely many, but they all conjugate to this. The general definition it is maximal solvable subgroup. 
And the quotient by it is compact and it's called flag variety. Common projective variety. Um, so uh, the most uh, elementary generalization, uh, if we want to go to arbitrary group, arbitrary, uh, it's, called, it's called linear reductive group. So uh, for tomorphic forms, tomorphic forms, uh, we let uh, G be a linear reductive group. Be a linear reductive group defined over Q. So for example, it can be, uh, my favorite example is GLN, but if you prefer simple groups, SLN, uh, it's not really simpler, it's just satisfies the definition of simple group. Uh, SON, uh, SP2N, and uh, it can be uh, F4, G2, E6, E7, E8, something like this. So every one of these has forms, uh, these also have forms. I, I, I don't care, it's fine for me if you think of just GLN for some time. Um, so how we would like to define, okay, really, let's, let's discuss GLN for some time. So for GLN, the first thing you can do is uh, to take uh, indeed uh, the radical of the Borel. So N is upper unitriangular matrices, matrices with ones on the diagonal, zeros below the diagonal, anything above the diagonal. And uh, we would like to decompose the form uh, over this. So what is an automorphic form? So it is a function at a, a function on uh, G of the Adels quotient by G of Q, uh, which uh, satisfies some properties, but to define Fourier coefficients, we don't yet need these properties. So I'll just say satisfying all kinds of things. So uh, we would like to decompose it to Fourier series by M. Uh, this was uh, done uh, by Pitetsky, Shapiro, and Shalaika for cuspidal eta. So why do we need any assumption? Because N is not a billion. We cannot uh, just say, oh, it's invariant of these shifts, let's decompose. So, uh, but it can be done column by column. So, Pitsetsky, uh, Shapira, Shalaika, assume eta is cuspidal. So, what does it mean that it is cuspidal? It means that if you take its constant term with respect to new radical of some parabolic, subgroup parabolic means it uh, includes uh, Borel. So uh, or, uh, another definition, it, uh, another, it's, uh, includes, it's conjugate to, oh, in some basis, it is block upper triangular. So it's new radical uh, looks like uh, you. It's uh, identity, 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 zeros here, anything here. This identities can be of arbitrary size. So if you take uh, just integral over such a thing, integral, I mean, comp I mean uh, integral over u of, so integral of eta u of a modulo u of u, eta of uh, u du, and we can even write some g here, this will be zero. So that's what cut hospital means such an integral will be zero. Uh, this integral converges for two reasons. First, cuspidal forms have some, uh, uh, they uh, uh, tend to zero at infinity. So any kind of integral of them converges, but for this integral, there's much simpler reason this quotient is compact. So for an important group, it's uh, period uh, is compact. Uh, so uh, if it's zero, the form is called cuspidal. And uh, we will be using this. 
So the group N, actually, it has a very nice uh, composition series. So any N has canonical composition series just by taking commutators with itself. But apparently, for Fourier coefficients, this is not uh, the most convenient composition series. For GLN, they are different. The last column. Let's just take the subgroup, which is the last column. It is very clear. Uh, so matrices that are uh, 1, 1, 1, 0, and anything here. It is very clear how they multiply. Just consider this as a vector and add them. That's how the result of, that's what ma matrix multiplication gives. So we can restrict to this, uh, say that, okay, over Q it's invariant. So the quotient is compact, decomposed to Fourier series. Uh, the, there are two kinds of uh, coefficients. So coefficients correspond to characters of this group. Characters of this group uh, are of the, of the following form. So this group is just is a morphic to Adels to the power n minus one. And uh, the characters decompose by just uh, taking a linear functional into Adels and then applying some non-trivial character. So let's fix a non-trivial uh, unramified character psi. Now characters is the same as functionals. Uh, all uh, functionals are, uh, there are two kinds of functionals, zero and non-zero. All the non-zero functionals are conjugate by what? So we have a, a group of symmetries here, which is GLN minus one. It uh, normalizes this group. And uh, it, how it acts on this just action of matrix on a vector. All non-zero vectors are, so it acts transitively on non-zero vectors. It also acts on functionals that can be identified with this row by trace pairing. And uh, uh, also all non-zero functionals are conjugate. So using the action of gel and minus one, um, uh, we can say that there are only two kinds of coefficients. One is the one that picks up this coordinate. Th that's how you go to a to n from a to n minus one to a, and the other trivial. So there's constant term, and there is one Fourier coefficient. But to this one Fourier coefficient, you also have many conjugates. But running on this group, we reduce to one. Uh, so the constant term vanishes because uh, this is a particular case of, so there is this parabolic subgroup. It is called mirabolic, which means miraculous parabolic. So GLN is very special because it has this, has this miraculously big parabolic subgroup. A restriction to which still gives you a lot of information on the form and the representation it generates. Uh, so uh, the constant term over it vanishes if the form is cuspidal. So we can just continue with this Fourier coefficient. Now this Fourier coefficient, so how it is defined, if we call this U and this character we call uh, phi. So phi picks up this. So the composition, uh, so, so it is integral. So Fourier coefficient phi of eta, uh, it's a function still on the group of G. Maybe I want to use here, correct? It's integral over uh, U, so over, uh, u of a quotient by u of q, eta of u g, uh, psi composition phi of uh, u d u. So this is a Fourier coefficient that is function on g. And if you let g to lie just in this, um, in so let, let G lie in GLN minus one, but then further, let it lie in stabilizer of this functional. This will be, uh, 
Pn minus one, it will be uh, no. this subgroup of GLN minus one. It should stabilize the last row, which is exactly our functional. So uh, it is the mirabolic subgroup of GLN minus one. And on this subgroup, it why, why do I want to restrict to this subgroup? Because on this subgroup, it is invariant to its Q points. So it's no more an automorphic form because it will not satisfy all the other conditions, but it satisfies this invariance, which is uh, important for me. And since it satisfies this invariance, uh, we can uh, restrict it further and further and further. We can decompose uh, now by the next column. And then we decompose by the next column and so on. So uh, eventually, ah, uh, so I would like to spell Pietetsky Shapiro. Pietetsky Shapiro uh, Shalaika. So I'll tell, tell you one secret of number theorists. When they write PS, it means Pietetsky Shapiro. Uh, so, Pietetsky Shapiro Shalaika uh, decompose eta uh, into the following type of Fourier coefficients. It will no longer be Fourier coefficient phi. Let me call call it. Uh, just maybe just call it for your coefficient because it is very canonical. It's very standard, maybe not very canonical, but it's very standard of G. It will be integral over N over maybe, okay. Maybe I will call it phi like this. N of A over N of Q. Uh, eta of it look it has exactly the same form phi of u uh, of n dn but the, the group is now n is the n is this subgroup which i already wrote so uh just upper unitriangular matrices why? Because it's composed by from columns. First, we integrate over the first column, then on the second column, then on the third column. So by a Fubini type algorithm, you just get integral over this group. Now, what is the character? The character, we, uh, first we took this coordinate, but then we further decompose uh, using a character taking this coordinate and so on. So as a result, the character is phi of uh, G, is uh, we of course apply our fixed additive character, but to what? To some g uh, n n plus one. So we sum all the super diagonal elements, all the elements just above the diagonal. So uh, this is uh, the Fourier coefficient of uh, Shalaika Petetsky Shapiro. And uh, this generalizes, uh, not the result, but uh, the definition, generalizes to any group. Uh, how it generalizes? N is the new radical of the Borel. And uh, the character, this character, it is a non-degenerate character. Uh, well, uh, non-degenerate means it has a biggest orbit or the smallest stabilizer. But we can also define one explicit character, uh, take all this, uh, just the sum of all the simple roots. Uh, I mean, not the roots of root spaces. So uh, we should fix uh, one element in, the, in each root space. So for any matrix here, consider the coordinates of these elements, sum these elements. <coughs> So uh, such Fourier coefficients are perfectly defined and uh, important, they will be Eulerian. Uh, 
uh, by a local uh, uniqueness result proved by uh, Shalaika and Gilfant Kajdan, actually historically differently, Gilfant Kajdan over Piadix, Shalaika over Archimedean places following them, uh, they will be Eulerian. So I will call this non-degenerate Fourier coefficients. So this is non-degenerate Fourier coefficient, non-degenerate. That's because the character is generic. Fourier coefficient, Eulerian by Gilfan Kashdan Shalaika. Gilfan Kashdan Shalaika. Uh, but uh, so th th these are very well behaved, as I said, Eulerian, namely decomposed to Euler product. Uh, I'm, sh I'm not a number series, but I'm sure they care number theoretic information. Uh, the problem is uh, that uh, not every form decomposes into them. Why? Well, first of all, even in GLN, we had to assume the form is cuspidal, and uh, there is interest also in non cuspidal forms. But even worse, for SP4, kind of the first step out of GLN, there exists a cuspidal form such that all these coefficients vanish. So uh, we have to generalize the definition. Uh, so how do we generalize? We still want, still want to keep it of this form, but we want to vary the Gilpotent uh, subgroups and vary the characters. <sighs> so do we have to vary both? Maybe we first uh, stick to this biggest Nilpotent subgroup and just vary the characters. Okay. So this will work for GLN. Actually, the same result by Pitsetsky, Shapira, and Shalaika, if you follow it, you can produce a huge, horrible expression. Uh, but in these terms, the sum will be there. And then there is a... a if you put other restriction on the form, for example, you assume that it's minimal or next to minimal, which in other words means that many of these coefficients vanish. And then there is another expression which is manageable, uh, produced uh, by uh, uh, so several people in the audience, plus Al Alan and Liu, uh, Axel, uh, Daniel, and Henrik. There is a manageable expression. So for Jillian, you can live with it. But for SP4, uh, this same uh, cuspidal form. Cuspidal means that if, implies that if you make this character degenerate, it will vanish. So for the same as before, you have to take a different uh, nilpotent group here. Uh, so uh, let me give you the most general uh, definition I know. Uh, and Yes, no, let me give it straight definition. Um, so uh, it, the coefficient will be defined by a pair of early algebra elements. So uh, I will call such pairs Whittaker pairs. So, uh, Whittaker pair. is a pair H in R. Ah. Okay, so I did not say, so let G be the Lie algebra of the group. So the group is defined over Q. So G is a vector space defined over Q, which sometimes I identify it with just Q points. So in particular, these elements are rational. 
So let me also say that instead of Q, we can take any finite extension, any number field you like. I just stick to Q for the simplicity of the talk. So uh, 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 it, it's a pair like this, such that, such that, first of all, uh, H comma F is minus two F and uh, the, uh, the, so, and we call this H is rational semi-simple. So it's semi-simple and all eigenvalues are rational. Or in other words, it's a joint action that diagonalizes over Q. Uh, now I need some notation I denote by G H I uh, all the X and G such that uh, H X is I X. So this is a notation for the I eigenspace of this joint action. And G H bigger than I, or maybe bigger than J, sorry, is direct sum over all J bigger, over all I bigger than J of G H I. Just, I think it's a reasonable notation. Now, uh, given uh, we took a pair a chip define we define a peculiar nilpotent uh, subalgebra and a chip uh, to be uh, we take G H one intersect with the commutator of F. So maybe I want to write also commutator. G F, this is all X in G such that they just commute with F. So F is zero. So this is this direct sum with G H bigger than one. So we define this peculiar nilpotent subgroup, subalgebra, sorry. Um, yes, and I would like to point out two things. Uh, one, that F itself is nilpotent just follows from this uh, relation. So, so if you raise it to powers, it becomes eigenvalues uh, minus four, minus six, and eventually we run out of eigenvalues because G is fine dimension, so it has to be zero. Um, and uh, also that F is a character of this uh, subalgebra. Because if you take two elements here, if uh, they are, uh, so this, uh, this, uh, Subalgebra, the subalgebra is an ideal. Take anything here and anything is a here or here. Commutator will, eigenvalues will sum, it will be more than one. Uh, sorry, more importantly, that if you take anything, something here and anything else in the subalgebra, the commutator will be more than two. So we have a killing form pairing on G. Killing form. In form. Now for any x, y in n h f, the pairing of f with commutator x, y is zero. So why is that? Uh, the proof of this is, has two steps. Step step one, 
not both of them here. If not both of them are here, the commutator has eigenvalue more than one plus one, which is two. And F has eigenvalue minus two. So uh, eigenvalue uh, minus two can only have non-zero pairing with two. So GH minus two orthogonal to GHI for any I not equal to two. So the only problem is if both are here, but then we use the invariance of the killing form. So this is the same as of X. I think up to, it is up to minus X F comma Y. So if X is here, that's why I intersect with GF. If X is here, this is zero. So, uh, F defines the character of this guy. F, or rather, killing form pairing with F, defines a character from NHF to rational numbers. So, uh -huh. so we uh, then we define n hf to be the exponent of n hf. We define a character chi f from n hf of the adels to complex numbers by, uh, so F defines the character from NHF to the additive group. Uh, so it particularly defines from NHF of the adels to the adels. And then we apply our fixed and ramified character C. So, so now we define Fourier coefficient corresponding to HF of eta. It's a function of G given by integral uh, eta of GN, chi F of N, D eta. NG, and maybe NG. N of Adels divided by N of Q. So this integral just converges on the nose because the quotient is uh, compact. So let me raise it, it will be our main definition. And so I would like to give some examples and then answer questions. Because I understand that this definition was long and difficult. So I hope to illustrate it with examples and then stop for questions. So examples. Examples. First, G is GL2. H is a diagonal matrix one minus one. Uh, F is uh, uh, actually whatever F is first NHF, NHF, it will always be just this subalgebra because this has no eigenvalue one. Once there is no eigenvalue one, F doesn't participate in definition of the group because this vanishes. Only where H is bigger than one, when it's bigger than one, it's two. In this case, uh, then is this. Well, then we can take F. We can take anything below the diagonal. And uh, the Fourier coefficient is our uh, beloved Fourier coefficient, which 
in particular can also be called the constant term if f happens to be zero. Uh, second example, still G is J2, H equals F equals zero. Uh, then uh, NHF is zero, NHF is zero. Uh, so here I should say Fourier coefficient, classical, classical. And Fourier coefficient zero, zero of eta is eta. Integrate over the trivial group, don't change anything. Uh, Maybe more interesting example is G equals GL3. Uh, so first we can do the classical Fourier coefficient, uh, two, zero, minus two. Then uh, NHF will be again. So the Lie algebra has zeros on the diagonal. The its exponent, the group will have ones on the diagonal again. A very classical Fourier coefficient. F we can take, uh, so F can be uh, here this time. Should have eigenvalue two exactly. So it's not the corner. It can be anything here. The pairing with F will take the sum of these two elements with some coefficients. The coefficients are these numbers here. So F can be, I don't know, one, two, this will be non-degenerate for your coefficient conjugate to the standard one, which is one, one. It can be one, one, or it could be uh, one, zero. This then we would get degenerate for your coefficient. It could be zero, zero. Uh, now, uh, more interesting case maybe is G equals GL3. And F equals this rank one matrix. So of course, this rank one matrix is conjugate to this rank one matrix. Maybe let me put one and zero elsewhere. Maybe it should be more clear, zero, zero, zero. Um, uh, but uh, I would like uh, to then use the following H, which is, one, zero, minus one. Uh, so this is first maybe interesting case when we do have a, a one eigenspace, but in this case, uh, still uh, no, this term doesn't come up. Why? Because uh, this uh, form SL2 triple. So uh, there is a, a secret uh, player uh, here, uh, which is uh, E. So, yes. So there is a secret player E, which is this matrix. So zero, zero, zero. And they form SL2 triple, which means they satisfy that HE is 2E, uh, HF, that's what we require, minus 2F, and EF is H. Uh, in particular, uh, all uh, lowest weight vectors have non-positive weights. So this intersection is zero. So still, uh, still we will have an HF. It will be the bigger than one eigenspace, uh, which is this one, just this one, and F defines its character. But what is important for us is that this is uh, precisely the center of the Heisenberg group, the classical three-dimensional Heisenberg group. 
And this one eigenspace, while it's not part of the group we are integrating on, it plays a role in the analysis of these Fourier coefficients. I'm afraid I will not have time to show you how, but it plays a role. It has to do with theta series and helps to analyze. Um, so this example is very general. Why? Actually, the important player in this uh, pair is F, the nilpotent element. And so frequently you want a Fourier coefficient attached to a certain nilpotent element, or even its orbit, because when you conjugate the whole stuff, so you conjugate the function, but it's not really diff different. So you want to attach coefficient to an important orbit, you choose a representative F, which H are you supposed to choose? So if you have no uh, extra requirements, extra information in your problem, always choose such an H. It is always possible by a theorem by Jacobson Morozov. So every nilpotent, for every nilpotent element F, there exist E and H satisfying these relations. So use this H to define this L2 triple. Your life will be simpler uh, because uh, this will vanish. And because you chose something canonical. So uh, actually, uh, well, an expert in this Fourier coefficients is uh, David Ginsburg. And he uh, would only call this Fourier coefficient only if you chose H from an SL2 triple. The integrals I consider, he said, okay, you can consider them, don't call them Fourier coefficients. Now I do call them Fourier coefficients. One reason is because uh, my uh, collaborators from string theory <laughs> need Fourier coefficients like this. Uh, for example, when n is uh, n is like this, n is in the radical of the borel, but the character may be a degenerate. Uh, so it fits to a more general definition. And second, because I can analyze them in high generality, so I prefer to work with high generality. So for example, in GLN, well, you know that this Mirabolic group is nice, so you have some reasons to consider the radical of the Borel sometimes. So if you have a reason, you are allowed to choose a different H. <laughs> um, another example for GLN is just this column for your coefficient. So maybe my last example, and then I stop for questions. Five, uh, G is GLN, uh, H is, uh, so one, 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 minus one. Then NHF, no matter what F is, NHF is zeros and just one column and zeros. So this uh, allows to decompose by the column part of the petetsky shapiro shalaika algorithm. And this generality allows us to generalize this algorithm for other groups it will not produce as nice results. Uh, so, yeah, F has to be uh, in uh, minus two eigenspace, which is this. For the definition of NHF, it doesn't matter because there is no one eigenspace, only uh, two eigenspaces. So actually all the H's I showed, uh, all the eigenvalues were integers, that's the standard. Why define Q, uh, allow Q first because I can, and second because uh, this comes up somewhere in our proofs. Also, if you say you will want to put this H into SL2N, uh, SL, sorry, into SLN, then, uh, well, you notice the trace is not zero. If you want to trace zero, you subtract something, this become, uh, this values become irrational. Oh, but eigenvalues will still be two. Sorry, it doesn't matter. It comes up in our proofs. Okay, now please questions. So let's thank Dima for the very nice uh, description of Fourier coefficients. No, that's not the end of it. <laughs> questions, comments. But uh, so it's not that I finished the talk. Oh, you didn't finish it. Oh, I'm sorry. My fault. Excuse just, uh, me. I thought you were finished. My fault. Well, uh, then. Then we would well we we'll the applause for the a few more minutes. Okay. Yes, but 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 questions are very 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 welcome. All right. Looks like you should carry on. Okay. Uh, fine. So um, all right. So uh, then I will ask some questions and give you some answers. Uh, so. Uh, 
So first question, uh, can any form be uh, decomposed uh, through its Fourier coefficients? And the answer is yes. So the decomposition is not as nice as, uh, uh, as in uh, Petersky Shapira Shalaika. Uh, maybe I want to, what, what do I want to do? Maybe, But so so this is a theoretical result. Uh, it has an algorithm how to decompose, but it's not, I mean, you will have to work using this algorithm. It's some recipe which we proved works. We also worked it out. We worked it out for minimal and next to minimal forms uh, for ADE types or simply ways. Um, and then the we produced nice expressions. Why? Because the conditions minimal next to minimal means that most coefficients vanish. So you have seen an uh, example of such expression in R on stock. So by no means our algorithm uh, generalizes what he does because he went much more, his formula is much more explicit. But if you have some group where you don't have uh, this hands-on experience like in his talk, our algorithm will tell you where to start, what lines to follow. Um, but we can say, for example, we can say nothing about rationality of this. Um, uh, then uh, another question, uh, what coefficients uh, can be non-vanishing? So, yes. I was just wondering if you could say a little more about what you mean by decompose into its Fourier coefficients, because you could always take like a one-dimensional unipotent group and expand along that. So presumably, you know, uh, you are that. absolutely right, right. So uh, for GLN, for example, it means uh, what Petit Shapira Shalaika do, the Whitaker. So the radical of the Borel, the same we do for minimal and next to minimal. We go all the way. For other groups, or without assumptions of minimal next to minimal, for some nilpotent orbits, uh, this nilpotent orbit just cannot be represented by a character of the Borelian radical. So we, we go as far as possible. We take the biggest uh, nilpotent group that can uh, represent this nilpotent orbit. So for each nilpotent orbit, we go as far as possible, and we allow these for your coefficients, and then the form decomposes into them. Uh, now, uh, if you assume that the form is cuspidal, then once you go as far as possible, if you actually went anywhere, if you did at least one step, you increased your nilpotent uh, group, the coefficient is zero. So cuspidal forms decompose into Fourier coefficients with respect to what's called Q distinguished nilpotent orbits. What does it mean? It means that the F does not lie in any Levy subgroup defined over Q. So for GLN, it means like Petersky Shapira Shalaika, only the regular nilpotent orbit participates. Um, for symplectic groups, it means uh, that only uh, uh, very even partitions participate. So nilpotent orbits are given by partitions where all parts are even. For um, orthogonal groups, it means that only very odd uh, participates, very odd are ones where or parts are odd, but we even have some further restrictions. So we, give, we also answer the question of how small a, a cuspidal form can be. And in particular, it cannot, uh, if rank is bigger than two, that it cannot be minimal, it cannot be next to minimal. Except we didn't check F4. 
That's one, one case we did not check. Thinking and for it cannot be minimal, we didn't check if it can be next to it. Uh, so that's, uh, so orally I told you an, another corollary. And uh, also as uh, a question of Eulerianity. So take a form, uh, eta, and take the biggest possible uh, Fourier coefficient. So what do I mean biggest possible? So we define WO of eta is a set of F in G such that there exists an H such that the Fourier coefficient HF of eta is not identically zero. So this is WO. WS of eta, uh, let it, well, I define it to be WO of eta max. So there is a certain um, order on nilpotent orbits uh, by inclusion in the closure. It's a partial order, corresponds to the classical ordering of partitions. So we take maximal orbits here. So there is a question of what orbits lie in WS of eta. Uh, and the conjecture is uh, all orbits in WS of eta. Eta are special. Are special. Um, proved for classical groups, groups by Zhang Liu Savin, but this was following Moglin and Ginsburg Rally Sudri. Ginsburg. Rallis Sodri and uh, so uh, we have a result with Raul Gobes and Siddhar Sahi slightly weaker but for general groups quasi admissible for general groups or energy. But so uh, for general group, it's slightly weaker. For classical groups, it's exactly equivalent to spe special. Um, and now, as I said, if it is cuspidal, if it is cuspidal, then we Whitaker's support. So we call this WS, we call it Whitaker support. That's what it says. Is Q distinguished? Q distinguished. So which means does not lie in any Levy subgroup. Then there is the next question. Oh, I still have five minutes, right? Given W O of eta, W S of eta, what is W O of eta? Okay, so you know what are the maximal orbits, what are the small orbits? And this question is very difficult. There are very few results because these orbits are hard to catch. Uh, but we do have a result for GLN, uh, which is uh, a little bit surprising, and it is all the small orbits, all the coefficients for small orbits do not vanish for some choice of H, of course. So why it's surprising for cuspidal, you would expect small orbits to vanish, but that's if you choose H to get N uh, this. If you choose uh, the H from uh, SL2 triple, these coefficients will not vanish for GLN. But for other groups, uh, we have only very partial results. If some orbit, uh, if some orbit is in Whitaker support, then you go a little bit down, 
no, you go down in certain ways and you get non-vanishing coefficients. But uh, we cannot say about Q-distinguished orbits that are smaller. We cannot catch them by our methods. So I, I really don't have a conjecture. Uh, and uh, then uh, one last question, what about Eulerian? Uh, so let me give you a conjecture. Conjecture, if F is in Whitaker's support of eta, then uh, Fourier, but not the coefficient I defined for you, but rather Fourier Jacobi coefficient, HF of eta decomposes to Euler products. Always. To Euler product. Uh, so let me give you, tell you what it is on an example. On this example, for Fourier Jacobi, you choose a Lagrangian. So N H F uh, J is this with this. So you can choose this Lagrangian, this Lagrangian, any other Lagrangian. You can, there's a way to define it without choices using theta series, but you have to increase your group by which you integrate. Otherwise, it's just not big enough for the integral to be Eulerian, but in this, and this is proved uh, for, well, first uh, non-degenerate F, so F in the regular orbit, but this is classical, this is uh, Shalaika defined Kashdan. Gilfand Kashdan Shalaika. So this is Gilfand Kashdan. Uh, second, uh, for discrete series of GLN, series of GLN, and uh, this is uh, uh, me with. Uh, uh, Gustafsson, Kleinschmidt, uh, Persson, and Sahi, GG, KPS. And third, also by the same group, uh, in AD type, uh, minimal and next to minimal. But I conjecture that it holds in uh, full generality. Uh, maybe split or quasi split, maybe some assumptions like this, but I see no reason why not. But Okay, and at this point, let me stop. Thank you for that talk, which well deserves a second round of applause. Um, I'd like to ask if there are any questions. Yes, yeah, thank you. Can, can you put down the, the, the board so that we see everything? Yeah. Uh, Right. Could you define quasi admissible if it's not too long? Yes. Yes, I can do this. Um, so, uh, we, uh, maybe I should write somewhere here. Ah. Okay. So, uh, there is a form on G1, on GH1, there is a form which is defined by omega f of x, y is pairing of f with a commutator of x and y. The radical of this form is exactly the thing we put into an f, g1h intersect with gf. So this will be the ones that are orthogonal to anything. So since scaling form is not degenerate, they have to, you know. uh, so we have this G1H quotient by this radical. On this, we have a symplectic form. So there is a symplectic of uh, V, symplectic group of V, it has a metaplectic cover. On the other hand, uh, we have the commutator uh, so GH0 intersect GF 
so G, G H zero intersect uh, G F. The common commutator of the pair in our group, symmetries of our pair, act on this uh, simple uh, act on this act on this symplectic vector space, and therefore map into here, so we can pull back the cover. So ad admissible would mean that the cover splits. Quasi admissible means that it splits over the subgroup generated by unipotent elements. Just kind of the split semi simple part. Or the not anisotropic uh, semi simple part. Complicated definition, that's what comes out of the proof, actually. The first uh, proof. Uh, the reason is that this group acts trivially on the uh, Fourier Jacobi coefficient. That's also one of our theorems that the uh, unipotent elements of this centralizer act trivially on the Fourier Jacobi coefficient. So we get that this whole group acts trivially, uh, but uh, as this allows to, on the other hand, it acts genially. So this allows to split the cover. Sorry, more precisely, the group acts genially and the identity component acts trivially. So there is an identity component, so the cover splits. Anyway, it's impossible to describe the proof in one minute, but. So, so maybe that would be something ideas. that could be talked about at the break. Any more questions before our break? Uh, just a comment about our results to answer your question. So another way to see it is that we define a partial ordering for the uh, Wittiger pairs, and we want to find out what is what are the largest, in some sense, Fourier coefficients that are enough to describe uh, the automorphic form. So, for GLN, it's the Pietesco Shapiro ones, and we give what what are the largest, in some sense, Fourier coefficients that are enough to to capture. Well, if I may, I would like to comment on the comment just one minute. <laughs> So uh, for any F, there are different choices of H. And we really studied a lot the relationships between the different choices. And uh, as we can uh, see in uh, the examples from uh, th this choice gives uh, smallest possible N. And we also studied what gives largest possible N and the relationship between them. From this, you can by compact integration obtain the rest. But if the orbit is in what we call WS, the Whitaker support, you can also go back by decomposing it to discrete sums and adelic integration. So that's what goes into the result. So when you can take an Eisenstein series and compute some of these smaller Fourier coefficients, is that at all related to branching? No, I don't know what is branching. I mean, I mean, locally they're described by, you know, by the castleman chalika formula. So you would sort of, I mean, I, I know you're global, but even so you would, I would sort of wonder if I, if you start describing these, take an Eisenstein series and take these Fourier coefficients for smaller orbits, if somehow, um, you know, they're related to branching because the, you know, castleman chalika is related to the representation. Yes, yes. So we, we have a project with uh, GKPS and uh, now also Guillaume joined uh, that we want, uh, we are interested in certain next to minimal Eisenstein series. Uh, we want to compute uh, their uh, parabolic uh, Fourier coefficients for some parabolic, Sabilian or Heisenberg. And uh, we express these through Fourier coefficients with respect to Borelian radical. This, this is the first part which we did. And now uh, we want to compute these Fourier coefficients with respect to Borelian radical using a Kasselman Schalaika formula. And then we get a huge expression. This is also almost done on the way. Great. Well, uh, thank you. It's exciting to hear about all this work that's been done and is in progress. So uh, let's thank Dima again. And uh, we'll take a break of 10 minutes and reconvene for the third and last talk of our conference at 11.15.